Hi. Hi. How are you, Manju? Good, good. I am going to try to switch to grid. Yeah, I hope you're feeling better. I heard uh, you just... Yes. <laughs> Hanging in there. <laughs> okay, Hi, Manju. I, How are you? Good, good. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hi, Manju. Good to see you after a long time. <laughs> We have, uh, I'm admitting uh, P, uh, everybody in. Uh, so yeah, I've been getting messages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, the way we are going to start with, we are going to uh, get uh, some uh, points, some information uh, from the vice president, ISW. Okay. And, and then we are going to have uh, um, a quick intro uh, by our uh, executive board member, uh, Bhavna, and uh, then we will get started with our... Uh, Just switching my phone off. <laughs> yeah, same, I did this, like, you know, it's important to have in the silent mode. <laughs> yes. Okay, there you go, Jagan. Right. Good evening, everyone. And on behalf of ISW, it is my honor and privilege to have our distinguished panelists here for the first ever Women Empowering Women Initiative. My name is Jagan Srinivasan, and I am the Vice President of the India Society of Worcester, and I've been a Shrewsbury native for the last nine years. I have been, I started as a volunteer here at ISW eight years ago. I just walked into an event and I started helping around and that's how I got involved in this organization and it's been a pleasure since then. I want to take this opportunity to kind of give you a little bit of an history lesson, but at the same time, try to give you sort of a beacon of what ISW holds for the future, which is one of these new initiatives that we are going to be talking about today. So ISW actually <laughs> was started by a bunch of graduate students way back in 1963. And back then it was around 10 to 15 young graduate students going to someone's house for some good home cooked Indian meal at that moment. And from there on the organization has now reached over 550 members as we speak. So this kind of growth kind of exemplifies the nature of community and community empowerment, right? And I think I'm very uh, enamored and inspired by mother Teresa who said that I alone cannot cause the change. I just throw a stone in the water and the ripples of the wave causes the whole community to act. So from that perspective, welcome to our ISW community. And as one of the uh, members of this uh, committee, I want to kind of give you where we are with our vision, right? What started up as a small little room way back in 1963 has grown into an amazing new center at uh, 154 Main Street. We actually extended the square footage of our center into a brand new section to accommodate more events and to make it as a community center. We wanted it not just to be a cultural uh, kind of a place, but also for a place wherein we can have professional development, you know, initiatives like this. And as part of it, our president, Mr. Puneet Kohli, part of these initiatives called the ISW 2025 Strategic Plan, wherein he looked at what can we offer to the community from an ISW's perspective, but more importantly, from one human to another human, right? So the four major initiatives he started up was ISW Symphony, ISW University, Women Empowering Women Initiative, and the last Professional Entrepreneurs Network. So given these four kind of leaves of the same plan, Right. What we want to do is we want to sew the community together and make these events much more successful by engaging the community. Right. And I just am a mouthpiece and a volunteer of the society. But what I really, really like here is that all of you have given up some portion of your evening time wherein you could be spending with your kids or your loved ones to an initiative that we as an organization are planning to start. So I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And I want to go ahead and introduce Bhavna Sadhu, who is one of our executive committee members to give you uh, the nuts and bolts of this Women Empowering Women Initiative. Thank you so much and welcome all. Thank you. Thank you, Jagan. Thank you so much. <clears throat> uh, 
everyone. Uh, welcome to ISW's first of a kind interactive initiative for women. My name is Bhavna Sadhu, and it gives me immense pleasure to be part of this seminar. ISW, an organization created over 15 years ago, brings many programs that provide an outlet to the talented members of our community. It celebrates the unique heritage of Indians by bringing together members from diverse cultures. I personally have been associated with ISW for over 10 years now, with my kids going to cultural activities and Hindi school. And recently, as Jagan said, I'm honored to be part of ISW's executive team, thus getting to know how members balance their professional commitments with devotion to their passion. Societal barriers often put women at a disadvantage from their male counterparts. <clears throat> the battle between their home and work life has become a staple to many women. This seminar explores this struggle and brings its light for all of us here today. It offers a rare insight to women's strength in terms of how they balance their professional life and their passion. Today, our moderator, Snehlata Kadam, an associate teaching professor at WPI, is no less such an example. She effortlessly balances her professional life with ISW and other activities as well. Sneha, thank you so much for bringing up a very interesting session on women empowering women. We are all looking, I'm sure we all are looking forward to it for this very informative seminar. And before we begin, <clears throat> there are a few things I would like to call to attention. If the audience has a, any questions or comments, please feel free to write in the chat box. We will redirect them to our panelists who will answer them at the end. Also, if you could kindly share your email addresses so that we can add uh, to our mailing list so um, we could, uh, you could get updates about our future events and promotions. And now I would like to shift the spotlight over to my associate Snehalata Kadam, who will be taking over. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Can you all hear me right? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, just a tiny correction. I'm looking forward to become an associate professor. I'm an assistant professor at WPI, and I am, um, it's my privilege uh, to be in the field of education. Uh, that's the first thing I would definitely like to say. Um, and uh, the next big thing that happened to me is when I was in California, I, uh, I had a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and I was moving to the New England area. The first thing after our profession, what I look for is where is the language school? I need to, you know, be coming from the multicultural world, I need to teach my kids um, languages, different languages. <clears throat> my husband being in the neuroscience world, um, a multilingual kid is uh, uh, has a you know a different brain, whatever. So I wanted to teach my kids uh, languages, and there, sitting in California, I searched for language school near Worcester, where WPI is, and I found ISW, and that's how I got connected to ISW right at the spot. <laughs> and uh, since then, I'm so uh, uh, so. Um, appreciate you and so attached to everything that ISW offers. And the one thing I felt was uh, this is something that uh, there was scope for improvement or scope for a new endeavor uh, at ISW. We have a lot going on for the young kids. We have a lot going on for the seniors, for the uh, youth members, uh, cultural art, uh, and what you just heard from Jagan. And something I felt was uh, a need uh, was something for us women. We need to have something, a platform for us women who are professionally um, uh, looking forward to uh, make an impact, but we are also at the same time passionately involved in some or the other thing, whether it be um, community service at our profession or uh, whether it be a community service at large or uh, simply, simply moving forward with the passion of uh, making an impact, changing one, one life at a time or one uh, through one event at a time. So 
Uh, that's why I uh, am glad and I am thankful to the support that I got and here we are. And now moving forward, I uh, thank you all uh, from the bottom of my heart to accepting my offer to come join here as panelists uh, in, a, in a jiffy and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a great pleasure uh, and honor uh, for having you here. Uh, uh, so, uh, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Manju, Aditi, Yogita, Kalyani. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here as panelists. Uh, the way I would like to go forward is I would like to give a tiny bit uh, introduction of each of the panelists for our audience. Uh, and I am then going to start. A, it's, a, it's an interactive conversation. So I'm going to start with uh, some questions um, that I have thought about uh, looking at your uh, professional path, journey, and your passion. And then uh, uh, we would like to uh, discuss um, uh, and have a conversation. So, and uh, to begin with, I am going to introduce uh, last name uh, ascending order <laughs> so i'm going to start with terry, uh, terry uh, uh, so terry uh, just a quick introduction terry is our dean of graduate studies at wpi she has been the first one uh, who is a full-time dean of graduate studies at wpi uh, her current role is um, being an advocate for 2000 plus uh, graduate students and uh, uh, she's also oversees master's, uh, PhD and certificate programs in the areas of engineering, arts and sciences, as well as business. Um, and at the same time, she's a full professor in chemical engineering department uh, since uh, 2010. And um, she has uh, been internationally recognized a researcher. She works in the antimicrobial microbial peptides. I think something, uh, you know, with respect to infection, and we all know going through the whole pandemic world, what the infection means as a broader picture, or, uh, as well as the specific aspects of it. And um, yeah, um, and at the same time, Terry is a uh, professional ballroom dancer and I am intrigued how she manages with three kids and her profession in dance along with her um, position at WPI uh, which is uh, really um, important for each and every student's life I must say going through graduate studies. So that's Terry, welcome Terry. Uh, and Next, uh, I would like to, uh, as I'm going ascending order, I would like to introduce Kalyani. <laughs> Kalyani, a good friend of mine. Uh, she has done MBA in finance and math, master's in math, MBA in, MBA in finance and strategy and master's in mathematics uh, from Georgia uh, Southern University. She, um, as many of us, she's an immigrant. Uh, she did her, uh, uh, initial studies in India, and then she came abroad here uh, for her higher education. Um, she's a Bharatanatyam dancer. She's a Carnatic music. Uh, uh, she's into Carnatic music. Um, and uh, she uh, also, I have seen her doing Bolly Bollywood dances as well. And uh, she is, one of her accomplishments is uh, being a, Mrs. Massachusetts Jewel of India uh, pageant winner. Uh, 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 she won that award in 2016. Uh, she also has participated in reality TV show and she's an actor as well. <laughs> she uh, loves to participate in uh, multiple um, uh, non-profit organizations, uh, helping uh, just like many of us. And she has an 11 year old. Uh, she loves reading and hiking. So that's Kalyani, welcome, welcome Kalyani. And again, thank you Terry, Kalyani and everybody for allowing me to have, uh, you know, to have the honor of uh, being part of my view program. <laughs> um, now I would like to move forward to introduce Yogita. 
Yogita. I have seen Yogita. I think I, I met you, Yogita, face to face on one of our ECL program. If you remember, uh, you were, uh, um, I loved the confidence that you uh, bring to the audience. And uh, since then, I was really impressed and uh, uh, I was wanting to have you and I'm glad you are here. Uh, Yogita is a software professional. She's the director of quality assurance at Oracle. Um, she has passion. I have seen her plays in Setu. She's an actor. And, um, and you know, she's following her passion to the core. Uh, she's enjoying it. Uh, and I, uh, I see, uh, again, the confidence that you bring in. It's, uh, it's really amazing. And I feel like, you know, I would like you to talk about, you know, how to go about uh, presenting yourself to the world um, and, and also community service we are all many of us are here um, you know with the community service background uh, yogita is the director of iagb and she is also um, a board member of uh, of winchester high school um, and uh, uh, she has been awarded as woman uh, of the year uh, 2021, um, so uh, 20 outstanding women uh, by uh, on INA's Women of the Year, and uh, Yogita also is a winner of Power World Global Icon Excellence in Acting Award. So, so many multi multifaceted personalities here. I'm just uh, <laughs> mesmerized with. Uh, she has two daughters and a puppy, and uh, um, yeah, she's uh, uh, she's enjoying to the core uh, uh, every bit. Uh, I see you uh, presenting yourself uh, at different places, so I'm glad to have you here. Um, next is our famous Dr. Manju Seth. I think I I'll fall short of words. Uh, uh, introducing you. <laughs> um, most of us know her, but I still would like to uh, go ahead and introduce uh, um, Dr. Manju Seth. She is um, a physician at Beth Israel Lehi, Lehi Health. Uh, she is trained in medicine from London and now in Boston. So she has seen the three continents, which I have the background as well. <laughs> three continents uh, uh, and uh, it just it just uh, trains you somehow uh, you know broadly uh, how you um, uh, take your life uh, one day at a time I would say uh, she is such an energetic person I have seen uh, <laughs> with her biggest passion in media uh, her motto is uh, making an impact through creativity and talent and showcasing that uh, through media. She has launched many endeavors, I would say. She has uh, Chai with Manju, the Indian American talk show. I can just keep listing it, <laughs> sorry. Uh, she has, uh, and in that talk shows, she has some celebrities like Sadhguru, uh, Kennedy, Madhavan, um, Sudha Murthy as well. Uh, she is the creator and co-producer co of the prestigious award called New England Choice Awards, where she has honored, she has organized, and I think she, it took a lot of time and a lot of midnight oil burnings, I guess, to set this up, uh, to honor the accomplishments of uh, this um, very um, um, uh, accomplished people, uh, and uh, it's it's a it's a great um, award show that she launched in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, of course her passion uh, for women is uh, no less. I mean, this as like I, I just keep listing it. Um, she has uh, uh, she directed uh, Women of the Year awards. She has created a global media platform and that's how I got connected uh, recently uh, women who win hashtag dream catchers uh, she has launched this global media platform uh, she's involved in fundraising she is the director of Saheli which is um, involved in um, women who are uh, Saheli as well as 
uh, Asian Task Force Against Domestic Violence uh, Crisis uh, um, Organization, nonprofit organization. And uh, due to all these, I don't know how you do it, Manju. <laughs> all these things, and she's a physician, okay? So with all these things, she's obviously um, yeah, is a recipient of multiple awards and recognitions, including 50 most influential Indians in Boston, 150 women of influence in Boston by uh, YMCA, excellence in community service. I, <laughs> <laughs> pride for the community. You are the pride of our community. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, community <laughs> leadership, women empowerment award, and of and also, which she's like, yes, it's my job. So, but I still want to say it, Manju. <laughs> you are a you got a distinguished physicians award. Thank so, you. Thank you. Very <laughs> kind. Our Manju. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, uh, such a role model. You are such a role model for all of us. And lastly, I would like to uh, introduce Aditi Taylor. Aditi Taylor, she is a senior vice president, director of global brokers relation and trade support in the asset of management industry. She's, she was, uh, before this, she was a chief risk officer and she also served as a partner principal in Deloitte, uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, Deloitte, uh, Deloitte Advisory LLP, and she worked on uh, consulting engagements across global companies. She holds an MBA from Bentley University, uh, MA and bachelor's from India, again, just like us, um, uh, an immigrant uh, having initial education in India. And uh, she has been active in the community service. Uh, again, just like many of us, uh, she has been uh, the president of NEMM, New England Marathi Mandal, and she has been the president of uh, Indian Association of Greater Boston. And she was also awarded, um, uh, inducted in Boston, uh, Boston's Business Journal's class of 40 under 40, recognized as Boston Business Journal's leader in diversity, honored by Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce on one of the 10 outstanding young leaders. And uh, in 2017, she was awarded by uh, India New England as most versatile leader, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, of course, she is uh, one of the big achievements and I'm impressed about that as well is she is involved in the move to reduce digital disparity during pandemic. I mean, this is, I think, the necessity of the moment wherein she is involved in the Tech Goes Home nonprofit organization. She brings free digital skills, trainings, discounted new computers, and home internet access for the one who need. As, and that's not enough. She is an adjunct professor of Boston University MET and teaches advanced enterprise risk management. Uh, she lives with her mom and she has two sons. Uh, and um, yeah, she is uh, our uh, esteemed uh, panelist uh, as like everybody. I mean, I'm like just uh, words can, again, words cannot be enough uh, for the amount of multitasking. And that's the theme I came up with, like multitasking that you bring to your world, to your uh, you know, um, environment and at the same time have a, such a great uh, professional world for yourself. So um, welcome again. And uh, yes, I've took a, a quite some time introducing. I just couldn't stop uh, or avoid a few things. So uh, here we are. Uh, I would first like to start with Terry. Terry, talk us, tell us a, a little bit more about yourself. I, I did give you the, give everybody the introduction, but of course you have, and as we say, everybody has a story to tell and I would love to hear some, or we, all of us would love to hear some, some stories about you. How do you go, how did you go about, um, how, what was your trajectory of your professional world as well as your, passion world 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Nihal. Thank you for the, the introduction. And it's really, it's an honor to be here with, with all of these esteemed women. Um, I was just in awe listening to all the introductions. Um, I don't think my story is all that interesting, but I, I can tell you I'm from a very small town. Um, I'm a first generation college student. And I think if you're you're growing up and you're you're pretty good at school. Everyone tells you, okay, you can be a, a doctor or a lawyer. Those are the those are really the only things my you know my parents encouraged me towards because it was the only thing they really knew about. If you're smart, those are your options. Um, that's not quite how it how it turned out for me. Um, I went to college and I found that um, I really liked math. And so I had professors in college that told me about engineering. I literally knew no one who was an engineer. I had never considered that I could be an engineer. No one in my family was an engineer, certainly not a woman. Um, but I think my professors steered me in that direction. And when I was about to finish school, my, my parents were really happy because they wanted me to get a job. <laughs> They're like, great, you're graduating from college. You can get a job now. And again, I had my professors who were telling me, you know, you, you seem to like research, you seem to be good at it. Maybe you should think about grad school and a PhD. And again, this was like completely unfathomable to my parents. <laughs> they were like, what, what do you mean you're going to go to school for five more years? Aren't you going to you know, be able to pay your bills? But anyway, they, they did um, come around to it. And I'm really proud that after me, my sister also went to graduate school. And, and by that time, you know, when my younger sister was going through it, like my parents just understood a lot more about the value of education and how this was a good thing. <laughs> and so um, they came a long way, I'm proud of them. <laughs> um, and once I, once I got to grad school, like I just loved it so much that I've never left a university since then. You know, I, I'm you know, colleagues with Snehal and Joggin. I've been at WPI 21 years. Um, I've held a number of different roles there during my time, but I think I just, I love the university environment so much. And maybe it's because I really didn't know anything and didn't have a lot of external support when I was going through my own education. I think that's one of the reasons why I love being a dean now, because I think I can I can see what kind of support students need. Um, I love fighting for students. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's just something I was always doing even before I officially held this role. I was always the person going and saying, you know, don't you think we should pay them a little more? Or don't you think grad students should be able to take vacations or what, whatever, whatever it was. So that's kind of how things have gone in my career. Um, I guess just to touch on some of the other things. Um, I mean, dancing has always been a big part of my life. I'm by no means a professional, but I would say that without it, I'm actually not sure I would have made it through graduate school. Um, graduate school was really, really hard. And in the middle of my program, my advisor actually moved from Arizona to Pennsylvania. And again, I was just sort of very naive. I didn't know, I didn't even know that I had a choice. And I thought, okay, my funding is moving, my career is moving, I'm moving. So when I got to this new place in Pennsylvania, an extremely, extremely small town, um, if I didn't have dance there, I, I I don't think I would have made it through the program. That was like my only support system, my only friends initially. So I tried to keep that as I, you know, as I started my own career. I did have to drop um, ballet by the time I got into my 30s. I just could not do it anymore. But luckily, I found ballroom dance, which is um, 
more amenable to older people. <laughs> and um, that's been my my new passion through my 30s and 40s now. So um, again, I'm probably talking too much. That's that's my story. Thank you. <laughs> No, it's it's amazing what you have, uh, and yes, being in the university, I think once academics, uh, always an academics person, I guess, uh, because uh, that's how how it has worked for me, and uh, I love I love being around students. I think we stay young, probably. Who knows? Um, thank you very much, uh, Terry. Uh, I think next I will I would like to just quickly get Kalyani talking about her journey. Uh, I think I, instead of asking questions, I would just like you to talk about how you, it's especially it's the math and the finance world. And math and the finance world, there was a study recently uh, I came across. Uh, and in that study, they, uh, they, they found out that we women, for some reason, we let go of the responsibility of our finances for some I don't know, we, are we not confident about it? Are we not ready to do it? Unless it is, it is a must, we would kind of avoid it. So <laughs> I would like you to talk about us women and the world of finance. Thank you, Sneha. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you for having me here today. I think I'm very honored to be here. And um, I also wanted to say that I think you bring up a really uh, good point, Sneha because I think historically we have seen in our households, even with our parents and grandparents where the finances are typically managed by the male members. And it's very tempting for one partner, especially a woman to take a backseat and you know, let the other person take care of finances and all other decision-making related to, um, I guess, uh, finances. But I think um, what I would say is, I think um, setting up goals for key events like college education, your retirement savings, and it should be a combined effort where both, I think both spouses need to be involved in. And um, these days, fortunately, you have a lot of resources, especially like if you take Fidelity or uh, Charles Schwab, they have all these, they offer classes where you can, uh, they can help us plan and, um, they also tell us how to enter into the stock market, trading. But I also wanted to, um, I think, say one more point. I think personal finance, I think, should be taught at a high school level. Yes. Because I feel like, um, irrespective mm -hmm. of it being a man, um, I mean, for a boy or a girl, I think every student who comes out of high school, I think they should have a strong foundation on how to manage their finances, especially balance their checkbooks. I think that's something that, I don't know if it's taught now, but because my son's uh, young, but I think it definitely would help for, um, for high school students to have personal finance in their classes. And um, as you all know, if you start saving in the twenties, right? we have a long runway and compound interest is always in our favor at that point. So I think we should start saving in the twenties. And again, I feel like the onus is on us to find the right tools and courses, which are especially readily available these days, right? So I think that would help us. Yeah, and it's like, we are never too old to learn, right? We are right, always, right. It's, it's always, we should be uh, you know, being in the academics world. I feel like, uh, one has to be a learner forever <laughs> and we, we do we do learn but some things need to prioritize some things like finances if you're not comfortable there are resources as you say we just have to put ourselves out there and take care of our finances uh, and uh, you know be uh, uh, what do you say be uh, empowered that way uh, and I think uh, that's the, that's your background uh, from math and finance that I was really impressed and, uh, and thank you for uh, you know, a, a good suggestion that it should start early. <laughs> it, it's never too early <laughs> and it's never too late to learn. Just start saving yeah. early. So you yeah, have... yeah. Now we are going through STEM education early for women, for everybody. I think fourth grade is already you know, in the elementary, they are saying that the earlier you start, uh, you know, creating this entrepreneurial mindset, growth mindset, and so on. So why not personal finance? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a good point, yeah. Um, I would like to now have Yogita talk about her uh, 
life experience. Uh, you are the director uh, at Oracle as well as you are an actor. And this multitasking, you know, I, I think um, being a parent uh, kind of gives you kind of icing on the cake probably how to do the multitasking itself. Uh, whether you are pro professionally up there or not. Uh, so yeah, please go ahead and tell us uh, your story. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Snehal. Thank you, ISW, for inviting me amongst these accomplished women. I'm truly honored to be here today. Um, as for my story, I mean, you know, I talk too much, so I really will have to control myself. Uh, <laughs> I, I come from a small town in India. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, obviously I'm not going to tell you my whole childhood story, but um, multitasking, you know, women in general are very good at multitasking. Uh, and that's just something that we uh, decide how we want to use it. You know, uh, for me, I'm never satisfied with just doing one thing. That's just my personality. I've always been that restless kid since school, since forever. And I always participated in a ton of things. I was very good at academics. So obviously my career path was chosen for me to be an engineer. You know, I mean, growing up in India at that time, I didn't have too many options. So that was there. Um, I did a lot of extracurricular activities until 10th grade, but after that, you know, uh, again, academics is where I was pushed towards. But after I got married, I came here and uh, I started working and I, that first inside me to do more uh, was there and it was actually more. Um, so I, I had to, I had to do something more, something beyond my job. And uh, that is what led me to looking for different opportunities. You know, when my kids were younger, obviously my focus was my kids and my work. Uh, but once they uh, become a little independent, we, you know, whoever has kids, they know that after a point, kids like to have their alone time. They like to have their own time. And that's when I decided that I want to do more things for myself and, uh, the stage has always uh, been a place where I felt comfortable, always um, uh, went on stage uh, through my whole school years, you know, in different forms, sometimes dance, sometimes allocation competition, sometimes um, acting in different things. So um, that's how I got onto back onto the stage. I found about Setu and, you know, I started uh, uh, um, being part of uh, their plays and, you know, then uh, fil some films and stuff like that. Uh, and the more I did that, the more I enjoyed, the more happier I was. And my husband saw that. He saw how much joyous I was when I uh, come back from rehearsal, when I come back from a shoot, I'm even more happy. I am uh, double the energy that I am usually. Uh, in general, I'm very energetic. So, um, you know, when the family sees that, they love that part of me. They love the mom. Uh, my girls, I have two daughters, two teenagers. They really get inspired and that is one of the main reasons why I also wanted to do this. I want my kids to know that uh, you should follow your passion, you should follow your hobbies through your life. Um, just because you select a profession, that it doesn't end there. You get only one life. You make it the most of it. Um, and, um, you know, I, I lost my mother when I was six years old. And that really left a big impact on me that, you know, what I've heard, I don't know anything about her personally. I don't know much because I don't have any memories of her, but everyone tells me that she wanted to live her life to the most. And that is something that sticks with me that I have to live my life to the most because I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. You do what you want to do. You do it, give you hundred percent to it and have no regrets in life. I don't want to have any regrets. In life. And that is why I do so many things and it gives me more happiness. Um, yeah, I don't know if I, if I answered your question, but... <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. I mean, that's totally correct, right? What we have been doing here is, you know, first, and uh, that's something that has uh, stuck to my mind. If you are happy, then you can make the whole world around you happy. And so many of our family members, our, our um, professional world, it's uh, it's dependent. It is dependent on uh, you know our happiness, our satisfaction, our fulfillment, and you know, you know this is if we find that path. And a lot of I I have a thirteen year old and I have a three year old, so <laughs> I have both extremes. I mean, so I keep asking my 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 son, what's your 
I don't know when you figure out. I don't know. It's sometimes you don't figure out what your fa- passion is. I, I asked him, I was like, I don't know what my passion is. It's like, I think, you know, you probably would want to put yourself and think about it. What is it that you like the most? And what is it that you enjoy the most? And, you know, you don't, uh, you know, you go to bed with a full heart. And uh, that's where uh, you would want to um, go and you would want to really make the best of. And that's how I am. Like, my husband keeps you have a young child at home remember and it's sorry if you know <laughs> when I'm communicating with you guys and you see some typos and I think many of my ISW members already know that if they see some blabbering message it's from my girl <laughs> so yeah she's around and yeah you know you just have to really manage it uh, and uh, you know do the best, best or most and by the end of the day, it has to be substantial for yourself. Did I do? Did I make the day's worth? And that's how you go to bed, um, you know, with peace of mind. And uh, yeah, with that, uh, thank you, Gita. And no, you're not. Yeah, I'm the one who talks a lot. <laughs> you all, a lot of my friends know. Um, Manju, <laughs> I would like to give the mic to you. Uh, you know, so the first thing that I would like to like to ask is your passion for outreach there are so many avenues that you have gone into and succeeded uh, the first thing was is the media the talk show chai with manju and this is something uh, that has i have not heard here in united states the indian american talk show What is your inspiration to take this path? That's the first thing I would like to ask, uh, using media for um, outreach like uh, Chavit Manju. Manju, you need to unmute. So um, first of all, I want to thank ISW for such a warm welcome. Uh, Thank you for having us and uh, Sneha, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you. media, as you know, is my biggest passion. Um, apart from that, I think what I really love to do is showcase people. And I think my biggest talent is seeing talent in others and then finding the best way to showcase them. And I think that is something I've believed in very passionately. Um, it's not easy for others to showcase you because as you know, most the, the world of social media We are all our own stars in some ways, right? So uh, Chai with Manju platform is extremely important to me. Uh, Since you asked, I always have felt that every life has a story. I love to write. Even in my school, I was the editor of my school magazine. But as so many of you said, from whichever part of the world you are, it was being a journalist was not that excitedly looked upon by parents that you either had to be a doctor, engineer, and not so much lawyer in India. (laughs) So um, yeah, medicine was my profession, but I always always wrote and I uh, did a series called Movers and Shakers in medicine, which was seen by Indian Union News. And uh, they invited me to do Chai with Manju. At that time, it so happened that I was also recognized for the work that I did in the community. I became woman of the year in 2011. So I joined, um, I kind of collaborated with Indian Indian News and I've been doing Chai with Manju since the last nine years now. Uh, I started, I became a director of Woman of the Year uh, since 2013. And then I felt that we needed a platform which was not just for women, we needed to have a bigger platform for everyone. So we started New England Choice Awards which uh, of course I'm so proud to have Aditi as our core team member there. (laughs) She's one of our superstars. So, uh, and that has been my biggest pride and joy. A woman empowerment is another, uh, you know, a cause which is very close to my heart. I've been part of Saheli for 12 years. Um, I did the first uh, fundraiser uh, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, actually. Um, Saheli, as everybody knows, is one of the most important organization I feel locally. It supports and helps the victims of domestic violence and their families. It was started by Gauri Banerjee and uh, Usha Vakil, 
Neelam is the current president, Rita Shah, and so many other wonderful women who work there. I'm just a small part of it. Um, after doing all these, you know, helping with fundraisers, I this year I took on as a chair of advisory board. And I think this is a role that I take very seriously because this lockdown has been so hard for us. But the worst thing is when you don't get along with your family or your husband and you're stuck at home. And as everybody is saying now, it's gonna be a pandemic, within a pandemic, once the doors open. So we've been preparing for it. And I, in my role, what we've done is we've started a lot of health initiatives, which include mental health initiatives with Indian Medical Organization. We are putting together legal initiatives with the South Asian Bar Association. So we're doing whatever we can to help out. And um, I have to mention Women Who Win because that's how I also met Snailata. So <laughs> that's the newest uh, project. Uh, many of you have written for us. So this was something which was in the pipeline and back of my mind for a very long time. Uh, Deepa Javari is one of my closest friends and we were uh, co-chairs of Indian Women Doctors at Iman. And we always said that one day we'll have a platform for women. And my daughter, Shalene, of course, you know, she's my only child and I've been driving this poor child with me for all my events and interviews for a very long time. But, for, you know, the good thing was it excited her. And then when she was in Babson, she also worked at the media marketing office. Last year when she graduated, because there was no graduation and her job got postponed. So we thought, let's do something positive in these tough times. And that's how Women Who Win was born. And uh, I have to say that each of us have worked over 20 hours plus every week. And uh, it's with a lot of pride that we are now read in over 80 countries because Shalene takes a map and every time we see on our web analytics, the story was read uh, or shared in another country, we get excited. Our last contributor was from Monaco. Uh, we've had great stories, great stories, and we have some wonderful programs that we are going to be launching soon, which will include mentorship for women. Um, and we are collaborating with a lot of organizations, and there is a, something very special in the pipeline. So stay tuned. And those of us who want to join us, you know, please join us in Facebook or check our website also. So that's my story in a nutshell. I, uh, Hope everybody gets inspired by all these other wonderful panelists today and we can all do some good and give, give something back to the community which has given us so much. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you so much uh, Manju um, for uh, everything that you have been doing and uh, you are, uh, you'll be celebrating the uh, India New England uh, uh, 10th anniversary. Um, Sign I, multimedia. It's the yeah, multi, yeah, multimedia. Indian England News is an institution. I think they've been around twenty years. <laughs> so, <laughs> so multimedia, yeah. Yes. So uh, it's, it's uh, the manage the 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 time how you are spending, how you are organizing. I think uh, I uh, I feel like we we have to just prioritize or set up our day in such a way that we also have a job like I know you don't want to talk about you you are <laughs> it's like I'm just amazed you are a physician at Beth Israel and you at the same time and uh, you have you are a mother and you are managing this uh, both this I think what that's what is um, very interesting we I think all women are have... multitaskers by nature I have yeah. never met a woman who's not a multitasker. I think yeah. every of you have on the panel. I think if you want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't want to do it, you'll find an excuse. Exactly. That's the way it is. Right? Exactly. To make That's time for things that you want to do. Yes, yes, right. that makes you happy that, you know, yes. that's, that's where you, the, the big thing is finding yeah. your passion. It's like Yogita said, she's so excited and her family can see that. You know, I'm on a, uh, when I have an interview coming up, I think the, um, the whole week it's at the back of my mind and I stay on a, you know, on my, my own cloud nine. So yeah, <laughs> it makes you happy. Yes, absolutely. 
Yeah, that takes me to Aditi Yu. I read your uh, one of your interview and you said, um, time management is an art. And <laughs> it completely connects to what Manju just said, that it's the time management and um, you know what you bring to the table and how you um, organize, manage. And what takes you, what energizes you? I, I think I would be all would love to hear from you, Aditi, now about how you have uh, managed your work life balance uh, with your passion, uh, being a president of NEMM, president of IGB. And I've seen it myself uh, that it takes a lot, it takes a lot of hours and it's community service. It's uh, no, you know, no remuneration, nothing. You are just putting your heart and soul in an organization because there is this big picture and a lot of times people, uh, it's, it's hard to see the big picture of what community service and what it is really going to do to the generations to come, I must say. So tell us about yourself. Uh, so, I mean, I think Manju actually said it, um, and I'll, you know, repeat it, even if it sounds cliche, but where there is a will, there is a way. Um, and I know that there are always extenuating circumstances in every situation, so I don't mean to generalize this, but I will nonetheless. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you really want to do something, you will figure out a way to extract that 25th hour in the day. Right? And you'll figure out how to do it. Um, and I, when I say it is an art, I really mean that it's an art, that there's no, there is no um, other way around it in that if you put your mind and your soul into wanting to do something, you figure out how to rearrange all the other things in your day-to-day -day activities in your life and you make that happen. Um, and I, I say that because I, by the way, don't take for granted all the other things and pieces of the puzzle that have to fall in place. That includes you know, your life, your family, your support system, which also needs to be organized in such a way that allows for you to do what you want to do, right? And so for a second, because I certainly have been blessed with that support system, uh, but you have to figure out a way to see how that works for you. I also, um, and I've said this, other conversations in the past, but I do give a lot of credit to my mom only because I grew up with a, a working mom, a working physician who somehow practiced many, many hours in the day and still had time for everything that we always wanted to do. So I don't know how she did it and still cooked and, you know, handled the household. Um, and so I feel like if she could do it, I absolutely have no excuse. Totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. Yeah, my husband keeps saying like, how am I going to catch up with your energy? <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's what, uh, you know, makes us happy, then that's what makes us happy. Yeah, uh, doing multiple things, uh, having many things on the plate. Um, and yeah, um, now I would want to switch gears a little bit. And Terry, I want to put you on the spot here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I apologize ahead of time. I didn't send you this question. Living in these times where diversity and equity is at the forefront. And um, there are a lot of changes happening. Uh, institution, we know from our institute point of view, and I'm sure you, you will have the experience uh, being at that position of being a dean at an institute. Uh, we are all women here and obviously you know, women of color, uh, women of different ethnicity. These are two important things that we are really working, uh, moving forward to bring that diversity and equity. So I would like you to, sorry again, I would like you to say, uh, you know, talk about it being in the position that you are in at WPI. Sure. So, I mean, let me first say, I think we've We've come so far. I mean, this past year has been a very, very difficult year. Um, but I think before this period of time, we were never even really having the conversations that we needed to be having in, in our professional space. And I, I don't know what it's like in all of the organizations you all work in, but even in a university where 
we should have been at the forefront. Um, we, re we really were not. And I think even at a place like WPI, which we would say we, we all pride ourselves on recognizing and valuing diversity until recently, we, we were not truly living those values. So even though we've had like so many scary and really traumatic and terrible things happen in the past year, I think as a, as a community, we finally got to the point of saying, look, this is on all of us. This is not, um, it's not like some diversity committee can come in and help you solve the issue of the culture in your own organization. So I'm, I'm kind of proud of us <laughs> at, at WPI because I think we finally got to the point of saying, like this is for this is for each one of us to say I'm a part of the solution now, and um, if I want this to be an inclusive and a and a diverse community, that I have as much responsibility as any other person in the organization to make that happen. Um, I mean, just from the perspective of being a, a woman engineer, always going going up through my career. You know, it was always the only woman. And then finally, like a few other women came, but they were always very junior. And I, it just takes so long to get to the point where you have a lot of women and a lot of people of color in senior leadership positions. Um, so again, I don't have any answers here, but I, I feel encouraged that people are finally starting to accept their own responsibility in this. Then the other thing that gives me some hope is that the younger people, so I maybe should have said this in the introduction, I am the mom of three mixed race daughters, they're half Indian, and for their generation, I just feel like all of this is sort of why are you guys still talking about this? Why, why haven't you, you know, why haven't you fixed these issues? So I do feel encouraged that the younger generation, um, they'll not hesitate to go to a Black Lives Matter protest, or they will not hesitate to call people out on anything that is discriminatory or racist or homophobic. So I, I'm encouraged by them and I'm trying to learn from them. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Um, yes, there. It's it's still some time. Uh, I agree, but we all uh, all of us have to take up that responsibility, uh, some or the other way, at one step at a time, one baby step at a time, I guess. Uh, and that really should make uh, a, a difference. Uh, there are a couple of things that that uh, I know. I talk too much, but I'm not going to talk. I'm going to try to quickly tell you a couple of stories. One of the story I also. Um, um, I, I lead the uh, Association for Women in Science, um, Central Massachusetts chapter. And there we had a speaker who came and gave a study about one of the famous institute here in United States, how the whole environment in that institute changed. I don't want to name names, but why would that environment change? Because the lead position changed the president of that institute who took up that position has had daughters and she literally that speaker showed us a graph i wish i could bring that graph in front uh, at some point she showed the graph that how uh, women versus men the graphical representation was so there was so much of disparity and then as soon as he took up the responsibility as a presidential uh, that lead role, president, uh, he having daughters changed the whole and whole scenario, and suddenly there was a boom in women leadership. So, um, women professors, women leaders in the institute, and so on. So, uh, absolutely, you know, one step, one baby step at a time could make a huge difference, and that's what I think we women uh, we have that responsibility in our work, work in our professional world. And uh, uh, also in our per personal world, uh, wherein we are uh, 
you know we are distributing our responsibilities we and that's why what also connects to we should take financial responsibility and we should you know have that balance uh, uh, everywhere and then the second story i you know it is uh, very remarkable that it has really hit my head is uh, in the physics world uh, and i'm going to take that question to you <laughs> kalyani in the physics world uh, there was a one picture the most intelligent picture of the century wherein only marie curie was the only woman uh, in the rest of the intelligent scientists around and 100 years later 90 years later there were 13 um so are we going to wait another 50 years no we don't we don't have to wait another 50 years or 100 years to see the equality and i think that really makes me think that you know we have to be aware we have to have uh, that confidence of putting it out there saying that yes we can do and that was is one of the main intentions of from can't to can you know is that switch or that that shift that needs to happen and uh, that leads me to questioning you kalyani <laughs> about um uh, what what's your what's your thoughts and views about uh, in the world of mathematics uh, since you have uh, the background from math uh, how is it um, and is it changing do you see the change uh, you know what would you say about these things um thank you snehal i think that's a very good question um i think i feel that people's mindsets have to change i think they are changing we have come a long way and we all know that fields like math science technology and engineering have remained predominantly male and with historically low participation from women uh especially i think these fields have started in the 18th century but still we don't find equal participation from women and i feel like we have come a long way but we still have a long way to go and i think the change starts with mindset uh now we are seeing more um middle school and high school kids who um are more into um stem careers because i think if we have more stem education majors i think that translates into more um stem careers and i also feel like one issue um that influences low stem careers among women is that the lack of role models right i think if um if you don't have role models the women the girls don't have anybody to look up to and i think i have been fortunate uh where my parents have um laid emphasis on education especially my dad is a math professor and he pushed me to do well really well never to give up and my mom supported me so well uh i have two brothers and there was no distinguishing distinguish i mean i was not distinguished between my brother and myself and and i also think that we as women we have some inherent stereotypes right we feel like stem fields are viewed as masculine and i think that mindset has to change example in india i think uh, one of the panelists talked about how the boys are encouraged to become engineers and the women are encouraged to become doctors or lawyers uh, as terry said so i think that mindset has to change but i think the onus is on among is on all of us right we have to be role models we have to mentor these young kids so that we can expose them to how much fun and how rewarding these stem careers are and i also wanted to talk about a recent i think a stanford um survey or a study that i found which is i think both illuminating and i think it was actually shocking too because um they studied that women who get 600 on sat math have a math ability to get uh that equals to a man's ability of 620 or 630 which is very interesting because i think women feel diminished confidence in their abilities and this is not because they have uh less abilities but it's their perception which needs to change i think that is uh i think i thought that study was very uh illuminating to me and and shocking as well absolutely i mean that's where it leads to how much we have is the and that's the the understanding that we have what we have and we need to go you know use our confidence we need to uh, apply our confidence to everything and we and we are pouring our heart and soul in different things 
but when it comes to certain things we come we we, we put ourselves and that's that's one thing i did write it in our the women who win one is <clears throat> there should not be any glass ceilings or glass walls around you when it comes to what you can bring out from your uh, inner world uh, you know we don't want to have any mindsets you know we just want to explore and expand our horizons we want to go above and beyond we don't want to get bogged down because what will this person say or what will that say or oh, this is not my field um and uh, you know and that the basic foundation for that is the confidence and uh, that confidence needs to be built up from ground up from the younger generation the more younger i remember i gave a talk to this 250 young girls middle schoolers wherein i talked about yoga and physics and they were like physics is oh oh my god no physics is not oh my god physics is not rocket science everywhere every time yes physics is rocket science but that's not all physics is everyday life and when i talked about that yoga relationship with physics uh, they were like awe of uh, you know and that mindset change and that confidence uh, these are i think those big pillars that uh, will help uh, change the whole environment and uh, talking about confidence as i mentioned yogita i love the confidence that you have how you present yourself i would like you to talk about you know that and you are the role model not just for your young girls for everybody out there that uh, you know if you have confidence you don't have any barriers you can you can achieve or lead go and reach where you want to reach uh, and uh, and that is what i think we need to put it out there for not just us women because as 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 uh, manju you said every person everybody has their own story and you know that story it needs to be uh, you know look back up upon or that no story needs to be told and that story needs to be in some cases built right and uh, for that you need confidence so talk about confidence uh, yogita a little bit from your point of view um so from my point of view thank you for that question um you know confidence there are two parts to it either you know you have it or you can acquire it it's actually a habit i feel confidence um anyone can develop it the way to do is you act confident in the beginning and then it comes to you so my personal thing is you know i my upbringing my schooling has made me a confident uh, individual but at the same time you know i wasn't as confident growing up you know every child goes through those weird phases and everything but i wanted to make sure that i don't come across as someone who doesn't have the guts to go up and speak maybe you know we all are conditioned by our environment by our surroundings by what happens in our life but that is uh, what it is for me and i am also lucky to have good genes confident genes that come from my father's side i am lucky to be surrounded by people that always believe in me that uplift me so it's very important for all of you to not only be surrounded by people that believe in you that uplift you but you do the same to people that are around you be it your children be it your husband be it your friends you know you have to you have to empower others and they'll empower you always it's a give and take thing and then um since i you know started going back on the stage with setu and in front of the camera the stage gave me a completely different level of confidence nail that i hadn't you know really experienced before what the stage gives you what acting gives you is the ability to transform into a different person and that makes me appreciate and understand others even more you know people that i have to step into to play the role uh, i understand their uh, struggles who they are and that gives me the confidence to deal with different types of people but like i said you know it is a habit you can develop it remember to support everybody that is around you you know you should build their confidence do not tear apart anybody that is so important i have been again lucky and i am good at shutting down people who want to tear down my confidence because of everything i've seen in my life maybe you know um, i believe in the saying all for the best so the struggles i've had maybe they've made me a stronger person a more confident person 
Yeah, I totally uh, agree. And it does remind me of my father saying that I trust you, you go ahead. I myself have had never coming from India. I'd never even left my, my state uh, coming from, you know, your small town girl never left your state and then I jumped directly uh, went to Europe and um, that time uh, going to Europe and uh, you know uh, cultural influence of how can you send your daughter for higher education without her wedding and my father is like I trust her and I mean, sometimes I would question how do you trust me more than I trust myself? I don't know. It's it's something interesting that it's like you don't know your your capacity. You don't know, you know. And and I think that's what we need to surround ourselves with people who are uh, helping us explore, expand our horizons. What we can bring it to the table. We need to have that supporting world for ourselves. And if that support is with us, and I, you know it's it's really important our family members our our family members supporting us is one of the big things uh, that uh, really helps us uh, go to the next level thank you so much uh, yogita uh, now i would like to go back to manju manju you have the world of experience talking to people interviewing interesting people i have uh, recently uh, you interviewed the the ceo of uh, Panera. I mean, so many people you must have come across. Uh, what What are the key things that you learned and really have uh, those people or those experiences that have made a big impact on in your world? You have, do you have any any story that you would like to share with us? You need to unmute, uh, Manju. You need to unmute. Okay, I think they're muted now. Yes. So, um, you know, uh, before I go to this question, I have to, uh, going back to what Yogita said, I totally agree with that. I think confidence is the best gift you are ever going to give yourself. And a lot of confidence for me comes from preparing for what I am doing. You know, whether I'm interviewing a celebrity, I, if you watch any of my interviews, you'll see there's a lot of work that goes behind it. And uh, preparation is, is, is something that brings you, you know, the more thought you put into it, the, the more effortless it seems, you know. So uh, the celebrities, uh, you know, I've interviewed a lot of celebrities for Chai with Manju and including CEO of Panera Bread, as you said. Um, everybody has a story and I always say everybody has a dream. And everybody has struggled in their own way to make that dream a reality. And everybody is human. So the celebrities have their own insecurities, their own struggles. The difference is that they have actually overcome them and put their best foot forward. And sometimes, you know, again, going back to what was said, they are also on stage looking very confident and optimistic when inside they're struggling that, like you and me. So I think the best thing I've learned is that just focus on what you want in life, you know, be a dreamer. There is no shelf life to dreaming. You know, there is no expiration date. Um, growing up in India, you know, they always said there was a retirement age and uh, once you were over a certain age, you were done and that's it, you know. But what I have learned is that you uh, carve your own path. Nobody should be able to tell you that your term is over. You decide that this is what I want to do. And just, it's not a dress rehearsal, just keep working at it, you know? And these are the people that, you know, when I interviewed, I remember Pandit Jasraj, you know, he told me, um, to bacha hai abhi, you know? And I was like, you know, you're, to see somebody so full of life in their 80s, um, they have, the one thing I do see among all the celebrities is their enthusiasm for life. And I'm, I'm one of those people that I like that, that's like fuel for me, you know. Uh, I remember, and since you brought up um, Sudha Muti, uh, when, when I chatted with her, 
she uh, sang songs to me from every decade, 60s, 70s, 80s. You know, she wasn't trapped behind her, her status and money. She was just as, as human as you and me. I met Sadhguru, another person that you mentioned, and I had just lost both my parents in a month and I was very devastated. But he came and not only he did the interview, he sat there for me with me for two hours in this little tiny studio that we had and taught me so much. That those are the things I'll never forget. You know, it's always the humanity, the goodness, um, you know, the, the values that you learn from people that, that you remember. And I think that has been my biggest lesson, you know? that just be a good person, do the right thing, give back, and then just, you know, keep hoping and dreaming and just have some faith in God and life will unfold very nicely for you, at least the best way that it can. Thank you, Manju, thank you. And I think we are uh, uh, coming towards the end and we would like to take questions, but I do have one more question for Aditi you. You being, uh, you know, in the community service, uh, I recently heard, and it's really, I, and I sent it to uh, a couple of my groups. I heard Kriya versus Karma. I don't know whether you have heard. It's been uh, <laughs> um, passed on. It's the it's the it's the words from Gita, uh, and uh, Kriya means uh, you grow up, you take up the responsibility of your family, you take up the responsibility, their financial responsibility, their caretaking, their well-being, their health and everything. That's all Kriya. That's what we do. Every human being does that. But karma, karma is where what we do to change or make a positive, make a positive change in other people's life. And being in the community service that we are, um, Aditi, I would like to put this question on you. What, what's your thought about this community service and the karma aspect of, uh, of giving, you know, giving it forward? I think we've all, um, there's no better joy than just paying it forward. Um, and you can decide how best to do it for yourself. There are many, many avenues of doing that. Um, Grew up in a vibrant community, um, surrounded by different aspects of, you know, performing arts growing up. Similar to Yogita, I actually grew up on stage starting at the age of four and still perform uh, locally here. So to me, performing arts was the first venue that I connected with. And that's how I actually started volunteering with IAGB back in 2005. Um, and I continued working with the organization for many years before I actually became president of the organization. And same thing with NEMM. But part of it was also kind of the karma of knowing what I knew, which I wanted to lead a, a community of people together towards something that they could find joy in. And I know some of them are here in, in the call today. Um, and part of it is what I was confident about what I know, and I was confident about what I don't know. Um, and I think many years ago, I actually worked with somebody who had this um, written on the whiteboard in her office. And it said, know what you know, get help for what you don't. Mm -hmm. And stuck with me forever in life, right? Because I knew that what I was good at was pulling the community together and marshalling the thoughts and the vision um, to get to a point, whatever that might be. Putting up, you know, some unique stage productions like some of you on, on the call here have participated in or leading an organization like NEMM or India Association of Greater Boston. But you can, you know that you have the wherewithal and the vision to see where you want to take it, but you have to balance it with the humility of understanding that you can't do it by yourself because you don't know it. And therefore you need to surround yourself with people who actually do know and are best at what they do. And collectively, you really just bring forth the joy of actually serving the community, finding your own happiness um, and seeing that kind of going forward and forging the path forward. So I don't know if that really answered your question of Kriya versus Karma. Um, but that's kind of been that's, that's exactly what it is yes yeah and yeah, yeah you know what I remember from uh, one of uh, uh, Manju's recent interview um, dream and team makes it happen these are the two pillars that we need to have we need to dream and we need to create a team or have a team nobody can do it alone 
and that can lead us to you know such a huge impactful giving it forward environment for ourselves i think we can uh, now um, since it's the, uh, already the time uh, we would like to get some questions and i would like to uh, give the mic to bhavna and she can take it from here for the questions that uh, i think we have a lot of questions in the chat box i didn't even take a look at that so bhavna please take note so much each uh, you i mean it's so inspiring to see all of you saying you know the things that we have learned in the past from from our childhood and uh, you know uh, dream big and give confidence and just keep on learning. that's really that's the key thank you so much for all of you um, you know it's really inspiring um i in the chat uh, i did not see any questions but i do did i mean there were so many comments you know encouraging words um, they could relate to what all of you were saying um, i mean there are people um, in the, uh, uh, zoom um, if they any anyone has question please go ahead i can unmute or they can unmute and ask them uh, to our panelists directly uh, anybody um i guess everybody is so overwhelmed <laughs> listening to you guys amraji if i may ask a question to our esteemed panelists sure so i you know as as a husband of a very driven and energetic and enthusiastic woman i think what i really wanted to ask the panelists in general is not just about what drives you or like can you remember of any single instance in your life that kind of triggered this is what i want to be and i will get to it no matter what so it's an open question to everyone this is just a husband wanting to know what drives his wife every day with all this enthusiasm thank you <laughs> I think um one thing I definitely wanted to say here was when I had my son I actually took a break from working so I took a break for 5 years until he started kindergarten and I I was working before then and then when I had my son I stopped working so I saw both sides of the facet and I actually wanted to at that time when I was at home I think I wanted to prove I proved uh and I think that i can do something different like i wanted to showcase my talent because i have learned um dance and music so i think at that point i think there was something because i think either spending time uh in in the house and um when the opportunity i think presented itself to compete in the mrs massachusetts jewel of india pageant i um embraced it but i think what pushed me forward was i think it was a great confidence booster for me uh for somebody who was uh i wouldn't say stuck but at home right so i think that actually changed a lot of things for me that actually pushed me to go back to work obviously with the support of my husband and i think and when you look at all the other women and how much they have achieved especially all the people in the panelist i feel like we women can achieve anything that we set our mind to we just need a little bit of inspiration from each other right i think there were a lot of people especially i think aditi um i have been following you for a long time and i think you've been a great inspiration to me as well as i think manju ji i've been uh, your fan for a long time so i think i get inspiration for all these things and i think sometimes when you're bogged down you kind of need these little this little inspiration to uh, push yourself forward right i think that's something that has actually helped me and keeps me going every day you know for me uh, when i as i said you know medicine is my profession and when i uh, writing and media and journalism is a passion of mine and i remember when i first started social media was new and uh, trolling was new as well <laughs> so i <laughs> i and uh, my husband used to in fact one day he told me he said you know um you don't have a thin skin you actually don't have a skin so <laughs> if you really need to develop a thick skin and people who are close to me uh, know that that was something i really needed to toughen myself but i but i feel that you know when you say no to me or feel that or tell me or indicate to me in any way that i'm not good enough or 
uh, are negative towards me, that makes me all the more determined to prove myself. Not that I owe it to anybody, but I do it for myself. And I think that's where you, when you want to strive to be your best, that's where you succeed in life. Like for example, I've always known that medicine, I can, I love so much, I'm trained, I can do it in my sleep, so to speak. But this was something I loved to do, but I wasn't trained. So even last year when COVID started and a lot of universities started um, offering online classes, I did, and we were gonna start this new platform, Women Who Win, I went and did almost 100 classes on, 100 hours of classes online, because I felt that at least, uh, you know, I am gonna do what is best for me, what is best for my group. So, um, you know, and it's not to prove to anybody else, it's to, also, well, just make me happy. It helps me grow. But when anybody says no to you in life, uh, make sure that you stand up there and say, you know what? Watch me. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jangan, I, yes. yeah. Jangan, you. I don't know your wife, um, but the very fact <laughs> you recognize how driven and amazing and fiercely energetic she is itself is a testament um, to, to her success because there's somebody like you who's supporting her right in the household. And I say that as somebody who's been blessed to have a rock who I feel is the wind beneath my wings. Not that a woman needs that, but it takes oh, yeah. So once again, you know, be that unwavering faith in her and I'm sure it's only gonna propel her forward. Yogita ji. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so for me, uh, like I mentioned before, my daughters actually uh, really, really empower me. I look at them and I want them to do everything that I could not do, not because I, my father did not allow me. He was the most supporting father ever. And I am what I am because of him. But I want not only my daughters, but every girl to know that you can do whatever you want to do. And I'm so proud my daughter who is, um, who just finished her freshman year in college her friends, her entire friend circle calls me the Yogita who is the ghost. So that, you know, my kids take so much pride. They're like, if the Yogita says something, they'll do it. My friends will do it as what my older daughter says. So that means I've succeeded in what I wanted to do, not only for my daughters, but for their friends also by inspiring them, by doing different things, by telling them, by letting them know through my actions that you can do whatever you want to. You are not going to be molded by some mold that the society expects you to be. Very well, Architect. Thank you so much. Terry, last but not the least. <laughs> I'm not even really sure how to answer this. I, I think that, um, I mean, the, the first time I ever felt like a real sense of accomplishment in, of something in my life was when I earned my master's degree. And so for many, many years after, I would always come back to that when I had to do something that felt too hard and there was no way I, I could do it. I would think back to that and how, okay, I got through this really hard thing. So maybe I'll be okay on this next really big challenge. I think they say this an exercise, like what you do right now for your workout, someday that's gonna be your warm up. And it's just interesting how that that applies in many aspects of our life too. like something that five years ago would have made you cry. <laughs> now you're like, OK, that's not such a big deal. I, I can deal with that. And then it gives you more confidence. And then you go on to the next challenge. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you. Bhavnaji. That's fantastic. Thank you, Jagan, and thank you, everyone. Uh, I don't know if uh, anybody else also wants to ask any question. Um, yeah, I think we can go for that raise your hand uh, reaction thing. If you want to ask any questions, you can uh, go into uh, raise your hand or something which you know is there in our Zoom world. So uh, go I ahead and Rohit, raise your hand. Yeah, Rohit, uh, I see his video uh, on. Yeah, but uh, you are on mute. Do you have any questions? Oh. I just want to, you know, my video is on. I just wanted to say this is a wonderful panel. I uh, really learned a lot from Yogita, from Aditi, who I know, from Dr. Shaith, who has actually taught me. Um, I was writing to her that he, you know, really taught me the, uh, the uh, importance of the doctor-patient relationship. There was a vignette she shared at a Saheli conference or an Iman conference that really helped me feel how important it is 
to maintain a strong relationship and patients open up to you. So I want to thank her. And then very nice to meet Kiliani. And, um, Dr. Kamasano, yeah, my mother is a pediatric nephrologist and I've heard a lot about cranberry juice. Now I know the person that explained that, that has explained why cranberry juice prevents cranberry tract infection. So I will tell her. Thanks. Thank you. Um, anybody else who can raise their hand? Any other question? I guess everybody is so overwhelmed <laughs> by the answers, by, by all experiences that you shared. Um, it, was, it was really uh, mind blowing, really. It's um, wonderful to see all of you here. And thank you, Snehal, um, for giving us this opportunity. You know, we, I'm sure everyone learned so much from everyone. So thank you again. Um, let me see if there is anybody else. Yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of comments uh, when oh, there are not really questions. Yeah. <laughs> there are no questions. I mean, everybody answered. <laughs> yeah, this is the first of many, I must say. Uh, you know, I would like uh, to provide this platform uh, um, through ISW and uh, thankful to ISW, the whole uh, EB uh, and president in believing in me and uh, allowing me to go out there and do what I want to do. And uh, in a jiffy, he said, go ahead. And uh, uh, thank you, Puneet, uh, if uh, he's here. Um, and um, yeah, many more to come. I would definitely like to have a platform for, uh, as Manju said, everybody has a story, whether you are at home, uh, you are on H4, uh, you are wanting to be out there. Volunteering is one of the best ways you can be out there with people, boost up your confidence and uh, connect with people, get the mentorship uh, that when, uh, when uh, you know, you never know who can end up helping anybody as in you at what point in time of your life. And uh, there's, no limit, there's no limits. So thank you and uh, looking forward. Uh, to um, many more and thank you very, very, very much to our uh, esteemed panelists. Uh, thank you, Terry, thank you, Manju, thank you, Aditi, thank you, Yogita, Kalyani. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, episode that we had. And we look forward to meeting you more often and uh, uh, working together and in, in inspiring, empowering each other, the whole motto. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.